Daily Prep, October 1st, 2020, St. Therese. Readings from Thursday of 26th week in Ordinary Time. Daily Prep, October 1st, 2020, St. Therese. Readings from Thursday of 26th week in Ordinary Time. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. After this, the Lord appointed 72 other disciples and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he himself was to go. And he said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. So you must ask the Lord of the harvest to send workers to his harvest. Courage, I am sending you like lambs among wolves, set up with their purse or bag or sandals, and do not stop at the homes of those you know. Whatever house you enter, first bless them, saying, Peace to this house. If a friend of peace lives there, the peace shall rest upon that person. But if not, the blessing will return to you. Stay in that house, eating and drinking at the table, for the worker deserves to be paid. Do not move from house to house. When they welcome you to any town, eat what they offer you. Heal the sick who are there and say to them, The kingdom of God has drawn near to you, but in any town where you are not welcome, go to the marketplace and proclaim, Even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we wipe off and leave with you. But know for a certainty that the kingdom of God has drawn near to you. I tell you that on the day of judgment, it will be better for Sodom than for this town. The Gospel of the Lord May you continue to travel the path of faith with the assurance that God will provide all you truly need. Most of us have a sense of baggage of one time or another. It not only cost us financial to store all our extra belongings, but it can cost us time and energy when we finally face the task of downsizing. The same is true in our spiritual life. We carry extra burdening weight as we travel through our life of faith. We think that we better hold on to certain beliefs, practices, and thoughts, just in case God doesn't provide what we think we want. We need to downsize, especially as we move along the path of faith. God does provide what we truly need. Let us be open to how the Lord Jesus provides for us. And let us be willing to let go of the excessive, unnecessary baggage. The one team for me that runs through the readings today is trust. Job's trust in the providence of God leads him to assert that he believes that his Redeemer lives and he will be given a new view of God. The psalm reflects a similar belief in being able to see the good things of the Lord in the land of the living. In the Gospel, Jesus sends 72 of his disciples on missionary journeys. 
he warns them to take nothing with them. And he also promises that God's work will be manifested in their efforts. Job has heard from his so-called friends. They have tried to convince Job that he should confess what he has done wrong. Those sins which have led him to have been cursed with all of the misfortunes he has experienced. In today's passage from the book of Job, Job dismissed their notions and professed his trust in God even in the midst of his adversities. Job's profession of faith in his Redeemer has been seen as a model for Christian believers who know Jesus as the Redeemer. The psalmist speaks from his trying times, also professing a faith in the God who will bring about good things to those who trust in God. The psalmist urges patience while God awaits the right time to bestow the good things on those who rely on God's abundant goodness. In the Gospel, Jesus commissioned 72 of his disciples. They are to go out and prepare the people in their towns, which Jesus plans to visit. Jesus sends out them with nothing other than the good news. They must trust in God and believe that God will provide for them as they minister to others. They are to announce the good news in both their words and in their actions of compassion and healing. As I reflect on the readings, I am challenged to examine my level of trust. Yes, I believe in my mind that God will take care of me, but I don't always act out that belief. It seems most of us find it hard to pack lightly. We always want to have a little of everything, just in case. I'm not advocating not planning ahead for a trip or even for what I do in my daily life. I'm just questioning whether I need so much stuff for the journey of faith that I'm on. On the work of faith we are on, we need to see if we can travel with less, trusting that God will provide it for what we need, particularly as we share the good news with others. We must really know and trust that our Redeemer lives and that Jesus will allow us to see the good things of God in the land of the living. Both now and after our death, when we really begin to live, sometimes it means we have to do without while we wait for the Lord Jesus with courage. Yet, if we can have the attitude of trusting in Jesus, we will truly experience the abundance which God has in store for us. The personal question or action for today. What assets baggage do I carry just in case? Does this say anything about my level of trust in God or does it speak more of my preparedness? In what ways can I proclaim my belief that my Redeemer lives so that others can experience some of the good things of the Lord Jesus? Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord God ever caring and always abundantly gracious. Through your goodness, 
you promise to provide for us if we trust in you. Sometimes we want a little extra assurance, and so we carry along a s e s s baggage just in case. We don't, you don't come through when and how we expect. Give us the patience to have the expectant hope that you will give us what we truly need, which may not necessarily be what we would want or like. May we be faithful disciples who accept the commissioning of your Son. And go out and proclaim the good news to others. We thank you for the way you have already taken care for us, even when we did not fully rely on your providence. May we proclaim our belief that our Redeemer lives and will allow us to see the good things you have prepared for us. We lift this prayer in the name of our Redeemer, your Son Jesus. He is with us as we make this prayer in His name, and He is always living and reigning with you and the Holy Spirit, our one and only God, for ever and ever. Amen. gian dối hãy cho nhau tình người bao la sống tràn hòa lòng vì tha không ghét ghét oan hờn nhòi